Willemville Stories Part 7, The Carriage Lamps, by Stephen Crane, Short Stories, Carriage Lamps, Willemville. It was the fault of a small nickel-plated revolver, a most incompetent weapon, which, wherever one aimed, would fling the bullet as the devil willed, and no man, when about to use it, could tell exactly what was in store for the surrounding country. This treasure had been acquired by Jimmy Trescott after arduous bargaining with another small boy. Jimmy wended homeward, patting his hip pocket every three paces. Peter Washington, working in the carriage ho house, looked out upon him with a shrewd eye. Oh, Jim, he called, what you got in your hind pocket? Nothing, said Jimmy, feeling carefully under his jacket to make sure that the revolver wouldn't fall out. Peter chuckled. Some more foolishness, I reckon. You dwine be hung one day, Jim. You keep up all your dis yeah nonsense. Jimmy made no reply, but went into the back garden where he hid the revolver in a box under a lilac bush. When then he returned to the vicinity of Peter and began to cruise to and fro in the off offering. Showing all the signals of one wishing to open treaty, Pete, he said, how much does a box of cartridges cost? Peter raised himself violently, holding one hand a piece of harness and in the other an old rag. Cartridges, cartridges, sound like uh, uh, what the kid wants with cartridges. Knew it, knew it, come home here holding on his iron pocket, he got money in it and now he wants cartridges. Jimmy, after viewing with dismay the excited caused by his question, began to move warily out of reach of a possible hostile movement. Cartridges, continued Peter in scorn and horror. He like you, no bigger than the a minute. Look you, Jimmy, you done thou swapping round and now you're gone holler a pistol. The charge was dramatic. The wind was almost knocked out of Jimmy by his display of Peter's terrible, miraculous power, and as he backed away, his feeble denials were more convincing than a confession. I'll tell you, Pop, cried Peter, in virtuous grandeur, I'll tell you, Pop. In the distance, Jimmy stood appalled. He knew not what to do. The dread adult wisdom of Peter Washington had laid bare the sin and disgrace stared at Jimmy. There was a whirl of wheels and a high, lean, trotting mare spun Dr. Trescott's buggy toward Peter, who ran forward busily. As the doctor climbed out, Peter, holding the mare's head, began his denunciation. Doctor, I gwine tell on Jim. He come home er, holding a pistol hind pocket and proud like he won a turkey raffle. And I sure know that he been up to and I don't challenge him and he never say he didn't. Why, what do you mean, said the doctor. What's this, Jimmy? The boy came forward glaring wrathfully at Peter. In fact, he suddenly was so filled with rage at Peter that he forgot all precautions. It's about a pistol, he said bluntly. I've got a pistol. I swapped for it. I don't tolly him poppin stand fish arms and him a kid like he is. Don't toll him land sake strutty soldier. Come here, you proud air holding on his pint pocket. He think he Jesse James, I reckon. But I done tall him pop stain no such foolishness. Fist thing blam, he shoot his head off. No sir titiniki, come out yet strutting in just main street. I told him, I told him, I shop. I done one loafing round the stable. If Jim he dwine, he go shooting and shooting round. Blam, 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 blam. Her noise say retires, retires. It's all right, a grown man, a gun, and no kid falling round me. Ritter, no sir retires. Oh, be quiet, Peter, said the doctor. Where is this thing, Jimmy? The boy went sulkily to the box under the lilac bush and returned with the revolver. Here it is, said, with a glare over his shoulder at Peter. The doctor looked at the silly weapon in critical contempt. It's not much of a thing, Jimmy, but I don't think you are quite old enough for it yet. I'll keep it for you in one of the drawers of my desk. Peter Washington burst out proudly. I don't told him I the doctor wouldn't stand no trafficking round here. Firearm. I told them. Jimmy and his father went together into the house, and as Peter unharnessed the mare, he continued his comments on the boy and the revolver. 
He was not cast down by the abstinence of hearers. In fact, he usually talked better when there was no one to listen, save the horses. But now his observation bore small resemblance to his earlier and public statements. Admiration and the keen family pride of the southern negro, who has been long in one place, were now in his tone.